America spent millions trying to persuade these farmers to grow anything else. But because of drug prohibition, coca and poppies are so profitable, they've kept growing them. But the Clinton administration had a plan. It was called Plan Columbia. They'd persuade coca farmers to stop growing coca, to grow bananas and sugarcane instead. How? Well, they'd use a carrot and a stick. The carrot would be that they'd pay them something, give them some farm instruments. The stick would be, if they didn't stop growing coca, we'd spray their field. And we are spraying them with herbicide that kills the coca and many other plants too. The peasants have come to hate the plains. First of all, it was the helicopters. Then it was the airplanes. Everything around us was wet. Two days after that, the leaves started to fall off the plants. That convinced them to begin ripping up their coca plants and hope the planes won't spray again. They know that, 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 that the stick is there and we are the carrot. USAID official Karen Harbert says the carrot's all the money America gives Colombia in hopes farmers will grow something besides coca. We can certainly try and help him return to a legal activity. But will they? Whenever a farmer does this, it just makes coca more valuable to those who do grow it. It's the problem of, of prohibition economics. When you try to constrict supply, then that drives up the prices and the profits, and that lures more poor farmers into this economy. San Ho Tree works for a Washington group that opposes the drug war. So we're talking about farmers who really have nothing left to lose. This is not a moral failing on their part. They're, they're really up against the wall. And growing coca means the difference between being poor or starvation. And they're not going to watch their children starve. Even if they did obey the Americans and grew bananas or pineapples, how would they sell them? The road we took into the coca fields was one of the jungle's best. Most of the area is accessible only by mule or foot. The farmers can carry coca paste this way, but it's not practical to carry the bananas and pineapples we want them to grow. Coca is the only thing that provides what we need to support our families. So we will spray them again until they understand. Rand Beers, Under Secretary of State, says America is not going to sit back and let farmers grow coca, no matter how poor they are. An illegal activity is an illegal activity, and one doesn't get a special pass for being poor. They have to recognize that every effort to grow coca will be challenged by the government. Every work effort, every dollar every pound of sweat that goes in to growing that coca may be lost. Even if the spraying isn't killing all the coca, it at least reduces the amount that flows to America. Actually, good? actually it doesn't. If the more money we have put into this program, the more we spray, the more coca there is. What we've been doing with our drug war is, is like squeezing a balloon. You squeeze one end, it pops out the other. And the Bush administration now admits that after the spraying, the amount of coca under cultivation increased. Increased by 25% last year, says the CIA. You know, these people just go further into the Amazon, they cut down more rainforest, and they plant more coca. And meanwhile, we're chasing them with our spray planes. In addition, America pays for helicopters, guns, and military advisors and encourages Colombia to wage war in those little jungle factories where people convert coca plants into coca paste. The police destroy the paste and the chemicals and then they pour gasoline on everything okay, listo, fuera, fuera. and toss a grenade in to burn the shack down. They shoot their guns to scare off any traffickers who may be watching. Go, 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 go. Then they make a hasty retreat in case the traffickers shoot back. Go. Did this make a difference? Not really. Because for every factory destroyed, there are many more in the jungle. We have not had the measure of success in the eradication program in Colombia that we need or that we want to have. How much do you stop? Well. 
I know what we're doing is increasing the risk to the traffickers. Is this a way of saying that we don't stop much? No, I think we, I think we stop a substantial amount. Ten percent? I mean, whether you look at it as 10 percent, 20 percent, or 30 percent, there is some teenager out there that will not be able to afford the drug, and it results in saving uh, somebody's life on the streets of the United States. And the spraying, the dumping of herbicide on acres of Columbia? Since he admits this hasn't worked, why keep doing it? You're squeezing the balloon. You say you succeeded in Bolivia, but that just moved it to Colombia. Now you're spraying Colombia, it'll move back to Bolivia. And the answer to that is we have to put pressure everywhere. If we're going to have success, we've got to fight this battle everywhere. And we will continue to hunt down traffickers. This is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Good evening. The king is dead. Pablo Escobar, the Colombian drug king. Who Authorities were excited when Pablo Escobar was killed. Gunned down today by Colombian police. People said it would cut the supply of drugs. But it didn't because the Cali cartel stepped in. Then they were arrested. The arrests are a mortal blow to the drug cartels. But they weren't a mortal blow because others immediately took their place. Yes. Others came in, more independent operators, uh, to take the place because there uh, are substantial profits uh, in the uh, cocaine business. In addition, the vast profits created by drug prohibition are beginning to tear this country apart. Law is breaking down. You think we have drug crime in America. Here, there are 10 murders a day. And now, of all the countries in the world, the one where you're most likely to be kidnapped is Colombia. Political leaders are especially at risk. Here, a presidential candidate is gunned down by drug traffickers at a political rally. And there have already been 15 attempts on the life of Colombia's next president. Here, surrounded by his bodyguards. He decided to leave the country. He's staying in Europe until his inauguration next month. Colombia today is besieged by warring factions, heavily armed warring factions. This group, the FARC's the biggest, they've been fighting the government for years and now they videotape their battles. That's what this is. And now the fight, which was once about politics, is mostly about drugs, because the money's so huge. The United States has declared the FARC a narco-terrorist group. But our spring, our war on drugs, is winning the FARC new friends. We are providing optimal conditions for these armed groups to, to recruit. Once their farms get destroyed, they have nowhere else to turn. So they're associating the United States with death and destruction. And this is not a way to win hearts and minds. We'll come back to America in a moment. Next. I'm an attorney. I pay my taxes. I live a good, clean life. And if I feel like smoking a joint, when I feel like it, that's my business. When we come back, 